there, and um, I'm here today. Subject near and dear to my heart here. Um, I hope I don't get a little choked up as I say some of these things because it's been quite a spiritual journey looking at myself as an Aquarian and kind of preparing for this video. Um, okay, so first of all, remember that Aquarius, of course, is if you're a sun sign, but you could also have moon sign in Aquarius. Aquarius is your rising sign or ascending sign. Um, you could have a very strong Uranus, which is the planet that represents Aquarius, or a lot of planets in the 11th house would also give you an Aquarius kind of feel. Um, you know, of course, it's known that Aquarians are unusual and kind of cutting edge and interesting and all that kind of stuff and usually not concerned with being part of the crowd, um, usually more trendsetters or not caring if they're, you know, out of step with things. Um, but also Aquarians are very much about the intellect and developing the intellect. When you're on the more of the spiritual path, it's important to move from just intellect and logic into the realm of intuition. So I find, you know, I have a very hard time meditating. Oh my God, I've been meditating since I've been 19 and it's just hard. Um, you know, I'm very, very smart and I want to figure things out. And I pride myself on having a strong mind. And just to surrender the mind to this energy of the intuition, the higher mind, it's hard for me to quiet the thoughts, um, but I do find I have a very strong intuition. Even though I don't, I'm not very good at quieting my thoughts in meditation, the results are still there with my intuition developing. So just to give other Aquarians hope that, you know, the um, Aquarius symbol, they talk about the water bearer, but Aquarius is an air sign, which is very mental. So those are more like brain waves that you see that little symbol for Aquarius. Um, and it's you know, the mind's always thinking. So that's quite a surrender to release logic and um, open up to that spiritual realm of mind. The other thing I find is very important for Aquarius is to open your heart. Um, you know, as an Aquarian myself, I feel like, you know, independence is very important and I don't need anybody and, and this sort of thing. And when you move into that spiritual realm, of course, you need your higher self, you need the soul, you need your spiritual guides, whatever. And that can be a little bit of an easier leap for, for Aquarians than actually needing people and being able to open the heart compassionately and feel it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to have help and to become more interdependent as opposed to independent because a lot of when you're dealing with esoteric stuff about Aquarius it's about um, kind of like we were talking about with Capricorn breaking down that sense of separation with Aquarius there's a lot of pride in a sense of like oh people you know and um, I remember when I was um, in elementary school there was this girl and she had this gym sweatshirt she'd wear and it wasn't it was actually high school I'm sorry but it said it was pictures of Linus from the peanuts on the front and on the back it said I love humanity too it's people I hate and I just thought that was really funny being an Aquarius it's like the idea of like helping others but don't get too close to me you know and I had to really learn to evolve my heart to feel it was okay to interact and feel vulnerable and um, to be closer to people heart in a heart-to-heart -heart manner. But that being said, on a spiritual level, a lot about Aquarius is about being moving from being an individual to being group conscious. So there is that sense of Aquarians, even that sense of separation you might have when you're younger, is sort of that sense that um, the group is very important and not so much you. And so sometimes that's the beginning of sensing group awareness. It's just a matter of being able to have the heart to want to serve uh, in the group and to sacrifice yourself for the group, which is an important theme for Aquarius. So it's not so much individual consciousness, me, 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 but what can I do to help humanity grow and, help, and serve the group? Um, then that's very important. Um, you know, one of the things too is real important for Aquarius is speaking the truth, um, speaking on the principles, living from your principles, and that usually doesn't make you very popular. And so if you are on the spiritual path, you're going to have some ideas that are going to set you apart from people, but it's going to, those ideas are going to, they're really stirring people up. You know, Uranus, Aquarius's planet, represents like a lightning bolt. 
and like a shock of lightning gives a lot of energy, but it's like, whoa, you know, it's almost too much for people to take. It changes you, but almost like so intensely. So a lot of times people aren't ready for your new ideas or they, they can't, they take it, it goes into them, but they're not ready to comprehend it immediately. So there can be a feeling of um, them, they're not getting it or they're rejecting you or something like that. Um, let me talk about this idea here. Oh, here's, I want to do this one first. That this was really interesting. I read this in um, Alice Bailey's book of Esoteric Astrology, which is great. Um, about Aquarius. I remember the first time I read this, I was like, oh God. Um, here it is here. It says, um, universal love belongs to the truly developed Aquarian. The average Aquarian puts all his wares into the window and often in the room behind the window, there is little to be found. Esoterically, the developed Aquarian puts all he has into his water pot, storing it there for service and giving it freely on demand to meet a need. So that, that idea of like everything's in the window and there's nothing else in the room is like the idea of Aquarian becoming deeper, becoming more available to people emotionally, you know, and being able to truly give and serve. And I remember feeling like, ooh, I got some work to do when I read that. Um, you know, here's another thing I wanted to get into with Aquarius. Okay, here's Alice Bailey's other book I work on a lot with these videos, The Labors of Hercules, which is... Um, you know, that if Hercules was developing into spiritual mastery, he had to do 12 uh, spiritual labors to develop in each one of the signs. And his, his um, labor for Aquarius was pretty interesting. Uh, I'm going to read you a little bit of it. Um, he's supposed to go to this village, King Augeus, I think it is. Um, who has, well, I'll just read here, that he approaches the realm where Agius was ruler, a horrid stench that made him faint and weak assailed his nostrils. For years he learned King Agius had never cleared away the dung his cattle left within the royal stables. Then too, the pastures were so amply dunged, no crops could grow. In consequence, a, blinding, a blighting pestilence was sweeping through the land, wreaking havoc with human lives. So he's asked, no one else can figure out how to clear these stables and cleanse all the poop out of this guy's village. So he ends up, Hercules ends up breaking down these barricades and having these two rivers that are coming into the village um, sweep through. So the waters, you know, like those two wavy lines for Aquarius, those two rivers come through and cleanse the village and move all the, the poo out of there. And um, that no one else, for whatever reason, could figure that out. So then um, he does this, but the king, who keep in mind this is about D Hercules' labor here, is about raising people's con levels of consciousness. And sometimes people aren't ready to have their consciousness raised. So the king says, you know, so it basically says, within a single day, the, the task that seemed impossible had been performed. Um, because he changed the course of these rivers. So then the king says, you have succeeded by a trick. The rivers did the work, not you. It was a ruse to take from me my cattle and a plot against my throne. Rewards you shall not have. Go, get ye hence before I cut your stature by a head. So he's going to cut his head off. So um, he gets basically humiliated by the guy he's trying to help and gets kicked out, you know, seen as a jerk. And his spiritual teacher says to him, you have spent your light that the light of others may shine. Um, and so he, and then later on, um, talked about breaking down the barriers. This is pretty interesting. And they're saying to the Aquarian person here, when you have done all you can to break down the walls and express life and love, which is what those rivers represented, um, and you're aided by your own soul whose nature is love, don't look for recognition, you won't get it. The hard task of the pioneer in any field of thought any person who is endeavoring to express the new ideals is always non-recognition and sometimes worse. You won't be praised. You won't be pitied. You will have a difficult time. But remember, you are um, hewing the path so that in the future, hatred and separation may die out. 
And I just think, you know, I'm probably going to get a little misty-eyed reading this because I can't tell you as an Aquarian how many examples I have. Starting from eight years old, this is kind of dumb, but I danced ballet. I wasn't quite eight. Maybe I was about 12. I started ballet at eight, and I was at the certain ballet school. And um, there were four little favorites, and I was not one of them. And at one point, the teacher said to me, you know, you're not doing this right with my ballet. And I tell you and all the girls, all the girls this, blah, blah, blah. And I said the truth to her. I said, oh, you've never told me that. You only pay attention to, you know, these four girls because they're the best and you don't pay attention to us. And she was, like her face just got really dark, you know. And when I went home after class, I guess she called my mother and told me never to come back to the ballet school. And I was like, what did you say? I said, told her the truth. She doesn't critique us. We pay the same amount of money. These girls getting better and better and she gives them all their attention because they're more talented and we're not quite as talented. My mother was like, you can't say stuff like that. I'm like, well, it's true. Why wouldn't I say it? But I was banished from the ballet school. I don't know if she ever improved her teaching methods, but over and over again in my life, I've been excluded. And um, I think to myself that um, being on a spiritual path, being Aquarius, it's really important to have those experiences of being thrown out or being the oddball of not fitting in because I don't have anything to lose, you know? I want to stand for the truth. I want to develop my consciousness. I don't care how it looks to anybody today. I, you know, I'm thinking about the future. I'm thinking I want to be on the cutting edge. I don't want to please the masses. I want to inspire the masses, but you know, it's like when people wear a fashion and they think, ugh, look at that, it looks terrible. And then three years later, everybody's wearing it. You know, it's on the runway and then no one want, likes it. And all of a sudden, you know, everybody's wearing it, but it's years down the road. It's like, I don't care if I look weird. I don't care if I seem weird. But I think that comes about as an Aquarian because I had many experiences of not being part of the group, of being too strange, or of being too independent minded and not wanting to be submerged in like the basic, you know, um, run of the mill stuff. So again, there's kind of a paradox that Aquarius is about group conscious and loving humanity, but not because you're going to sell yourself out to um, be a part of the lower consciousness. You're always wanting to raise up human consciousness. So there's experience. You have to be sort of outside of it in order to see what needs to be raised up. If you're too immersed in it, you don't know what there is to be fixed or healed. You know, you get sort of brainwashed by the status quo if you're too in it. So I think Aquarians get those experiences of being excluded and hurt early on um, so that they can just move forward in what they need to do spiritually. Um, so let's see. Um, interdependence, intellect, intuition, not fitting in. Okay. So I think I've said all I pretty much need to say about Aquarius. But um, just remember to continue with meditation, even if your mind chitter chatters, and just be trusting that you are going to get insights that are going to move you forward. Um, and that there are always people who get you. You know, nowadays it's easier with the internet and, and knowing more people are on a spiritual path. But it's important to follow your you know, own drumbeat while not having scorn for the people that aren't accepting you. Because ultimately there's that part like with Hercules, um, his labor, that you have to love the people you're serving even though they don't get what you're doing for them a lot of times. And that has to do with you have, as an Aquarian, um, an advanced consciousness, the ability to, to think in this larger scope. And humanity, or those, those groups of people you're helping sometimes, can only get a fraction of that, or they feel offended by it because it has to make them change to adopt the new idea. And eventually they'll get there, and they probably won't remember you're the one that jolted them into opening their mind. But, you know, you probably won't care because it's like you're moving on to the next thing. So, for Aquarians to not be bitter at doing their service and continuing to serve and continuing to... Um, you know, do that meditation, even though it seems dull. And finding other people who get you is real important. And seeking, you know, there might just be a few, but that's enough. You know, that's enough to have a spiritual, little spiritual family and to continue to move forward. So um, that would be my story for Aquarius. Um, and if you have any questions, please send me emails. And as Aquarians, you may really love these, these um, Alice Bailey books, The Labors of Hercules is a great one. Um, and then you could look up your moon sign, your rising sign, and whatever. But most Aquarians, I tell that story about the cleaning the stables and being thrown out of town as a loser. And shamefully, when you've 
solved a, <laughs> a problem out of your heart usually resonates with Aquarians and they want to learn more about that book. So anyways, thanks for listening and I'll see you later.